Hey everybody, Tyler Hart, back with another video. Uh, this time we're going to do something security related. Last night I was feeling a little froggy, um, decided to do something different, something off the cuff, uh, so I just did some rip routing. Uh, today we're going to do some password guessing attacks. I'm going to show you how I find my way into some of my customers' devices, um, routers, switches, wireless access points, things like that when I'm contracted for a like a red team engagement, uh, just a general security or best practices audit or something like that. So this video isn't specific to Microtik. I'm just using a Microtik device as a target for this password guessing attack. I'm trying to f kind of worm my way in to the customer's network. I find say an FTP port or an SSH port open on an edge device like a router in that's providing ISP access or something like that. And I can start hammering away at different logins trying to get into this device. If I'm able to successfully get into the router, then I can create my own backdoor credentials that I can use to come back anytime I want. Or I can go in, I can modify NAT rules, I can modify firewall rules to make it easier for me to pivot through that device into the rest of the network. So one of the first things that I do when I'm setting up a brand new device is just immediately change the factory default credentials. Everybody knows what the factory default credentials are for name brand vendors. Uh, for example, with Microtik, it's just admin and a blank password. On a lot of other vendors, it could be an admin, admin password. Um, it could be admin and then the name of the manufacturer or something like that. So we have to change the password right off the bat because everybody knows them, everybody's trying them if you have services exposed to the internet. Now, even if you change the factory default password, using a bad password can be almost as dangerous as just not changing the factory default password at all. And I'll show you how, as an attacker, I'm able to guess my way into someone's device via a bad username and password. Um, I'm going to be using a tool called Hydra. Now, Hydra is one of the tools that's included in Kali Linux just right off the bat, uh, but there's other tools that allow you to do brute force logins as well. Uh, there's also a lot of password lists out there. These are known bad passwords um, that other people have been found to use on their devices, and these, these lists of passwords, they're called word lists, they are shared around the community. You can find them on GitHub. Uh, there's dozens of them included with Kali Linux by default. So these are a great place to start for me as an attacker to start banging away at a device looking for bad passwords. And I'll show you now how I do that. Let me switch on over to my Kali Linux terminal here. Um, this is just a bare bones Kali Linux installation. There's nothing special going on here. I just downloaded the latest ISO and installed it. So our word lists are shared in user share word lists. You'll you never guess that. Um, and there's different word lists that are included. The big one is the rock you list. Let me do an LS tech LH here. Uh, it looks like this is yep. This is a 51 megabyte just list of passwords from a breached website that are available for us to try. 51 megabytes of just password text. That is a lot of passwords right there. Um, let me, I'm going to go to the Metasploit folder because this is where, this is where the majority of the lists that I use are. Um, so we've got some common passwords for SAP. Um, we've got some Postgres uh, SQL default passwords, uh, just regular password.list, Oracle default username and password combinations.txt. Um, we've got some stuff for Joomla. Uh, let's see, let's see, what else do we have here? Adobe top 100 passwords. I believe that this comes from a breach that had occurred at Adobe at one point, and they dumped the top 100 passwords 
uh, for everybody else in the community to use. Let's look at that. I'm gonna clear my... Let's look at the contents of this. Ah, there's some good common passwords right there. Ooh, here's a good one. Believe it or not, I have seen this one in a couple pen test engagements. QWERTY. QWERTY is always a favorite. Uh, the different kind of walk the tree keyboard um, combinations. Those are always good. I love you. Seen that before. Ugh. Football. I've never seen the football password, but I have seen passwords for that company's local uh, football team. Like I'm here in Washington State. If I'm doing a pen test against somebody whose business is in Washington, uh, Seahawks. I'm going to be testing passwords like go Seahawks, go Seahawks 1, go Seahawks 1 with a bang, um, go Seahawks 2020, etc, etc. Inevitably, I will find somebody who's a Seahawks fan. Anyway, yep, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, seen that before. So, you can see how easy it is to get a hold of a list of weak passwords. I'm going to clear that out. I'm going to go back to my home directory there just to kind of shorten the prompt up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of those list of passwords to attack the admin login on this MicroTik device right here. Now this is a fully patched MicroTik device. I have changed the default admin password. It has an eight character password. It has both letters and numbers in it. So it's not just like, it's not just ABCD or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There is a little bit of, of complexity there, but not, not much. So here's the command that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna scroll up here. I already put this in so that I would just be able to have it up here for you. Um, so like I said before, I'm going to use the Hydra tool. Uh, again, it's just, it's just included with Kali Linux and it's open to anybody. I'm going to be guessing the admin username. Everybody knows, uh, like, like on a Windows domain, everybody knows there's a default user called administrator. Everybody knows on Microtik there's a default user called admin. So this is the first thing I'm going to do is start banging away at the admin password. So for the P, the passwords, I'm going to specify a word list. Whoa! In this case, I'm going to be using a word list called the Burnett Top 1024. Uh, so this is the top 1024 passwords that were found in this dump. It's just in a raw text file. I'm going to be doing these login attempts against this IP address here. This IP address is assigned to, you guessed it, the MicroTik right here. I am also going to be running four threads at a time just to kind of speed up the process. Four threads seems to be a fairly good value that doesn't hammer the network or the device too badly, but it does allow you to kind of speed up the attack a little bit. Attack E is for extra options. The N is for null, so it will automatically attempt a null or blank password with whatever username you've specified. A lot of word lists do not include a blank space, so it's nice to have this option. And then the, then the S is for same. So the Hydra tool will try admin and then null, and then because I have the same option, it will also try admin admin for the password. Um, and I have seen people on Microtik just change the password from nothing to admin uh, because it was easy for them to type, easy for them to remember, <laughs> and it didn't really do anything for them security wise, but at least they didn't have a blank password. Um, so maybe it helped them sleep better at night. I, I don't know. Um, the tack I option is in here. This is in here uh, because Hydra, if you interrupt a previous test, it will save that session and allow you to continue the session. Say if you got disconnected uh, from the victim uh, machine and then you were able to reestablish a connection, you could just pick right up where you left off with your password guessing attack. The tack I just tells Hydra, go ahead and start a brand new session. Don't pick up where you left off. The TAC-V 
is for the verbose, so you can see all of the passwords that it's checking. Again, we're going to be attempting to log in over SSH, so I specify SSH. Uh, Hydra could, could attempt to log in over Telnet. It could attempt to log in over FTP, but people are getting pretty good these days about disabling insecure services like Telnet and FTP. So we're going to attack SSH. All right, so as we begin the attack, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the window full size, and I'm also going to make myself disappear. Bye-bye. So that you can see all of the data as it scrolls by here for a little bit. And we're going. You'll notice some of these passwords are not exactly family friendly, um, but welcome to security. Sometimes you see bad words, that's just life. So we're gonna let this run in the background. I'm gonna step away and I'm gonna come back here in a few minutes and we'll see what password we were able to find that I set for this device. So our attack is finished. We were able to successfully identify the weak password assigned to the Microtech router. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna make this window a little bit smaller here so that you can see. Here is the bad password that we found. 1Q2W3E4R. That's one of those keyboard patterns that sometimes people like to do. Um, they think that it's that it's convenient and that it's safe, uh, especially if the if the keyboard combinations are long enough, if they walk the keys down or across far enough. And that's simply not the case, um, as you see here. So we leveraged a list of known bad passwords against the known admin user on the Microtik device to then gain access to the Microtik. So I showed you what it looked like on the front end as the attacker. Show you again the command there just in case you want something to reference. Um, let me show you now what it looks like on the back end for the network operator who owns the device. So we'll switch on over here to the Winbox window and we'll pull up the log. And here is what our attack looks like from the very beginning. So you can see the router booted up, our links came up, our DHCP client got an address. Uh, that's the IP address that we used to attempt SSH logins. You can see me logging in. This is a legit login. And then the attack begins here. And we see login failure for user admin again and again and again and again. We're just hammering away at this device. Look at all of these failed logins here. So when I see failed logins like this, repeated failed logins for the same user in very, very quick succession, that immediately tells me password guessing attack. So I like that the log shows me these things and I like that it shows me what, what the source is and what the protocol is so that I can block this in my firewall if it's coming from the outside. Well, if it's coming, well, if it's coming from the outside, SSH should be behind a VPN anyway, but that's a whole other discussion. Um, if it's an inside IP address, you know then that you probably have a network breach. Somebody probably opened a phishing email, uh, got some malware dropped on their machine, and now somebody's trying to pivot through the network from that internal device. And you can go seize that device and start to get that thing cleaned up. So here's or the password guess is running, 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 running some more until finally, boom, admin logged in successfully, which tells you, well, 
somebody found your password. So you need to go in and change that password immediately. Now, one of the things to be aware of, if I, the attacker, reboot this router, all of these logs go away. Unless you are shipping these log events via syslog or some other mechanism to, to like a syslog ng collector or like a Splunk box or a Sumo Logic collector or something like that. If you're not shipping those out and I, as the attacker, reboot this device, all of this evidence, poof, gone. So it's very important that you ship your event logs somewhere else for analysis and reporting. There is no built-in mechanism to router OS for analysis and reporting of something like a password guessing attack. I have seen people doing some pretty hacky scripting stuff. It's not great. It's difficult to maintain across dozens or hundreds of devices. It's not a real monitoring and alerting solution. So you need to be shipping these events somewhere else to some other product so that it can let you know when a password guessing attack is being perpetrated against your system. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was instructional for you. I hope I hope that you guys like seeing um, some of the security and the attack stuff from the front end and from the back end. I'm going to continue to make some videos like this showing some of the tools that are commonly used by red teamers and, and real world cyber criminals and then some of the ways to detect and defend against those attacks on the back end. Um, if you could throw us a subscribe, we really appreciate it. If you like the video, please let us know um, if there are some other types of attacks that you'd like to see. Or, or just any other topic you want covered, uh, please let me know, and we'll see you in the next video.